M0FXB, welcome to my channel. Yesu SEU LAN 10 Networked Remote Control Software has had a firmware upgrade and now includes the Yesu FT710, also the DX10 and 101. So let's have a quick look at the unit, which looks like this. And then this is the kind of display that you will get and it means you can use your radio anywhere in the world or locally at home and you can see it's got a twin display there and twin waterfall so it's a very nice upgrade the units are about 300 pound at the back there you've got your accessory jack your cat 232 jack your LAN port it does need to plug into your router via ethernet and usb out and this is backwards compatible so there is a, um, eventually it will work with the 991, but at the moment it's the 101, the DX10 and the 710, but they have, they are working on that, imp uh, upgrading this, so it will work on many other radios as well. It's fantastic work by Yesu. So this video is just to show you how to, if you've already got one, how to upgrade the firmware. So the first thing you are going to need to do is connect your unit in the normal way and log in, which is the first instructions here. And if you look at the top right there, you are going to see the current version that you've got. Then go to the Yesu site and download the firmware upgrade, which is down on the 710 is down here, but your model may be different. Just click that and download it to your downloads file. You'll end up with a file that looks like this. Within the file, you have the actual software, but this software won't open until you've got the unit. You've got your instructions and also your operation manual and your firmware. If you look here, you will see the SCU LAN bit. Is it a bin file? Is that what they call it? Or was it an SPL? Let's have a look. Right click. Well, you can see it there anyway. So double click Yeah, SFL file, it says. You've got firmware here as well firmware upgrade manual as well which is what I've got on the left hand side here so back to the firmware installation it looks very very straightforward to me once you've downloaded it and you've got the firmware you log into your device scrolling down it says here click file select the file which we just looked at click update the firmware the update process indicator is displayed. During the update, the power LED on the SCU LAN 10 unit will blink in red and the status LED will blink in red. Please wait until the process has completed. When the update is complete, a login screen will be displayed, so log in. The configuration software screen will be displayed, so check the firmware. When finished, confirming, close, complete the firmware process. And that's it. So now installation wise, I haven't done that. I'm just going to do a separate video. I'll just have a quick look at it now. So connecting your 710 seems very straightforward. It's literally just the sort of printer style cable and then the ethernet cable. Looks like they're using a factory default IP address, which is 192.168.49.1. So there's gonna be a setup process to this. I can see that the the unit is plugging into the Ethernet of the laptop, USB cable going to the radio, but then how do we get the internet? So is it getting is getting the internet from your laptop? You're not plugging straight into your into your actual home LAN. It's going back to the FTDX10, similar, but they've got the accessory connector there. And the 101, which is what I've got at the moment. Same again. So number one, right click, start and click network connections. Change adapter options. Double click network adapter LAN card connected to SCU LAN 10. Click properties. Six, click internet protocol version four. Six again, make a note of the settings below. So you are actually changing your Ethernet, your internet connection settings manually by the looks of this. I wonder if the new, the new version does it automatically for you. This we'll soon find out. Change the settings as follows. So you're putting in the subnet mask. 
And, you know, it seems straightforward instructions, so don't be too scared of this. Just dive in and give it a go. Click OK. Setting the SCU LAN. Turn on the transceiver. Click the Windows Start button. I've got the software there at the, at the moment on my PC, but I haven't got the unit, so it won't connect. Then you log in. Username, password. Number eight, set it according to the network environment of the place where the SCU LAN and the transceiver are actually installed, which was confirmed in check the LAN for install transceiver. The following three connection examples explain, so please refer to diagram. Okay. For remote control via the internet. Some more configuration there. So I won't go too deep into this, so I'll actually do it live when I've got the unit here. So when you're going for remote control within the same LAN using a router, this is your setup. And I can see that the router is involved here. So yeah, a bit of a learning curve here, firmware. So thanks for watching my channel. I think if you've already got the SCU LAN 10, you're going to want to do the firmware update anyway. If you've got a 710 and you find this interesting, because I think what I like about it is I, I get screen control, because I'll use it locally just here in my shack, dual band screen control here in the shack on my PC. And I like doing that. It's, it's fun. Yeah. I know we've got the ex external display, but, um, Controlling things on your PC is fun uh, and then we can play around seeing if we can do FT8 and things like that We don't have to have to keep going over to the actual radio So yeah, there's a there's a window there of what you're going to see that looks quite good See if I can expand that a bit I think it's worth it myself and if you've bought the the set to keep I think this is a good add-on and there's audio configuration as well there. But like with all these devices, there's lots of settings within settings within settings, look. Thanks for watching my channel, it's going to be fun, bye for now.